Hey, hey Makuga, hey, get, out. get out. Get out, Makuga. <laughs> get out. Hello, David. Hello. Hello. Dustin is here. David, how are you, sir? Nice I'm to so see. good. I'm nice. so good. Oh, it's so fine. good to be here. I'm so excited. Nice Thanks, to meet guys. you live. Yes, live. Here we are. It's you, happening. Yeah, you know Coming in. You know, what I was talking about, um, what was funny about this is I we, we get a chance where we're lucky enough we go to all the Marvel uh, premieres. You yes. You're always there. Always there, and you are—you're like a hardcore comic book movie fan as well. Too, Huge. Is that correct? Comic yeah, yeah. book fan first. Right. Comic books started in comics, and uh, I grew up in Kansas City, third grade. I got my first comic, and then um, started collecting monthly series, and then. Uh, you know, uh, gosh, look, I'm like here I am today. It's really yeah. insane. It's, it's kind of mind blowing. Well, that's what I'm saying. So tell me, I want to hear that journey because I do. It's funny because you have such a memorable. Memorable face, first of all, and a memorable role because of Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, man, I remember that the second I see you after that movie, I'm like, that's oh, the no, dude. Oh, no, no, stay, 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 yeah, stay. But that's the dude from the Dark Knight. That, and then, well, then Gotham. Then Ant Man. All this stuff happens. How, did, how do you get Dark Knight? I tell you, it's this crazy story. So, like I said, I grew up in Kansas City. I was going to Clint's Comics, buying my comic books. First thing I started collecting was Marvel, but then I quickly fell in love with Batman, and uh, the Joker's always been my favorite villain. Okay. And, um, so then, you know, fast forward, I got very serious about pursuing a career in acting. I went to Chicago. I studied um, some of the best theater there. And, um, and you know, I, I struggled with addiction for a while. And so I had to actually put my, my, my dreams on hold for a while to, to get clean and to get my life together. And when I finally was able to start living a real life again, the dream of acting was just kind of a gone thing. I had let go of that. Okay. And, and, and I kept my comics, though, and I kept my, you know, my passion for and watching these films. this was back home? When, this is in Chicago, yeah. yeah. Okay, Chicago. And, Were you like Steppenwolf um, or something like that? I, I, I I did some studying at Steppenwolf. Oh, yeah. cool. I was at uh, De the DePaul Theater School. I worked Great with uh, a nice. bunch of amazing yeah. theater companies in in the city. And I, um, you know, I got this opportunity. I was doing a play at Writers Theater Othello, and I got a chance to audition for one of the clowns at the bank heist scene at the beginning of the Dark Knight. Yeah. And and yeah. I'd heard that they were going to make the sequel to Batman Begins in Chicago. And I was like, What can I do? What can I do? With it? So I go on this giant casting call with every other Chicago actor <laughs> to read like the two lines that were like, He thinks he's getting a cut. You know, he's crazy. Who is this guy? Right. Um, and the next day, the casting director brought me in, and I sat in a room smaller than this, and Christopher Nolan is sitting right there with a little handheld camera, and I do the same kind of lines, and the next week, they shot the heist scene. And I was like, that Damn. was my chance. That was my... I never got to be... That I was devastated. But you pick up, and you move forward, right. and I did this whole run of Othello, four months. At the end of that four months, I got a call from the, my agent at the time who said... You just got offered a role. They won't tell us what it is. There's, it's complete secrecy. You're gonna be night. a thug yeah. in the dark night. And yeah. I was like, Poof. so I, sh I show up to work, um, not even really knowing who I was playing, what I was doing, and all of a sudden I'm standing, you know, beside Heath Ledger in his makeup. Wow. I'm, I, I can, I can tell the story a million times, and it doesn't ever stop getting me like right here, like thinking about that, and 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 like. You know, just like looking at my killing jokes, which I'd worn to, like till I had to buy extra copies. All yeah. the different comics that I'd run through, and like to be standing there in that in, in that in that playground of Nolan's mind was a dream. Well, tell me about that though too, because being a big fan of like the Killing Joke, and all this, so when you because there was definitely he took a lot of that from that you see in, in and the, the Long dark. Halloween. Oh my gosh, right, I mean that's right, right, a huge right. inspiration. So when you're so is it hard for you though too when you watch because obviously it's like your first big gig here when you're doing this like it's my first gig it's the first time I'm on a film set right. you know I'm like that's with Christopher Nolan with, 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 with Nolan right, right here right, right. Gary, I mean, my first day in hair and makeup Gary Oldman wow. Christopher no I mean uh, uh, Christian Bale Heath Ledger Aaron Eckhart Maggie Gyllenhaal Dave the small like I'm just right. sitting there like oh, you're a name dropper am I yeah. doing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever do you ever though when you're when, <laughs> yeah do you ever like when you're on <laughs> set saying to yourself like well, that's not exactly the way they had it in the comics, but you were going to know it. You shut your mouth. No, no, yeah. because what they were, and, and I was in such a small moment in those films. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know what the script was. I didn't know what thing. But when I sat down and watched the film for the first time, which was at like a cast and crew screening in Chicago for all the locals who'd worked on the film. And you lost your mind. I knew that his cinema changed that night. Yeah. Like I knew something changed, and I knew that the, the comic book world changed that night. And I knew that he had created something that was going to change like it's so weird how like dumb and emotional i get thinking about this but like that i got to be this tiny part of like this thing that it means so much to me and that comic book stores changed after that yeah. comic book movies changed after that and uh well the landscape changed it did it and 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 and, and, the, and the, the the standard yeah for how we tell stories it wasn't like just put on some silly costumes and make you know not that great films had made before in that genre i love some of the stuff right. that had come before but this changed the game it's so funny that you say that too because in the same year uh iron man comes out 
Boom. And, and, and so here comes here, the MCU, right? Man. Because as where the DC uh, universe is just set up, and Nolan revitalizes Batman because we thought it was dead after Batman and Robin. He brings about the Batman Begins, hits the Dark Knight, and the same year as the Dark Knight, which is one of the most influential comic movies of all time, maybe movies. Here comes Iron Man, and what's funny about this is look at now here we are where you're in two. Uh, you're, you're in M- two MCU movies now with Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. Think about it. You're, you were asking me earlier, how does that feel? What does yeah. it feel like to be a lifelong fan and now to be in this world? So, to the DC universe, Christopher Nolan did something that has, you know, the best thing that has ever been brought to life in the screen in the DC universe. Then all of a sudden, the MCU begins, and it's now this historic, you know, piece of cinema history. Yeah. We're 20 films in now to something that, in my mind, embodies what it's like to be a comic book fan. Because every month when I get a new comic, I know that no matter what's going to happen at the end of the story, I'm going to go the next month, and right. I'm going to go the next right. month, and I'm going to go the next month. Just like with these films, I'm going to go and see. And each time, they usurp my expectations. They blow my mind. And it's part of this greater bigger picture the way that like um the secret wars was when we were kids yeah. and like the way that you could see the fantastic four and they and all these different people come together to fight the beyonder seeing how everything culminated with you know what's happening in infinity war for me to be this tiny part of it in my opinion the best way that marvel's ever been brought to life and then to have been a part of the best way that dc's ever been brought to life i it's, it's crazy man yeah. it's have crazy you, ha, do you know if you survive the snap I did. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, Kurt's... Uh, this is the funny thing. I don't understand how people don't get that. Like, Kurt's uh, hair is the most indestructible <laughs> thing. It's like, F Thor's hammer, F the, the shield, F the freaking god. I've been staring at her hair for five minutes. Like, it's incredible, yeah. It's Kurt's good hair. hair, there's a pile of dust, and there's still the hair. If, if Kurt and Thanos went at it, I would win. That was for it. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Was that, is that official? Did you actually uh, survive the snap? Survive the snap? snap? That was, um, that, that's one of the things that I was told I'm, I can't talk about. You can't talk but about you know it. the answer right. to it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, that's, that, that's fair. We yeah. know whether or not he did it. Yeah. Have you written like a fan? film of what what happens after the snap to you and your hair like a little it's, yeah it's either Kurt the rise of the, the rise, rise of the Kurt Knight <laughs> <laughs> yes. rises yeah. the, yeah. the Baba Yaga <laughs> return yes. how, how much of the of the Infinity War storylines did you guys know while you were shooting at Man and the Wasp here's the thing like officially yeah. not much but Peyton would give us need be stuff the pro not the problem but the blessing the really cool thing is i'm also over the years in the work that i've done and 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 being in these different things have become friends with a lot of the people who do work and have more knowledge than i do about stuff so sometimes the 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 fan the geek in me is like don't tell me don't tell me but tell me tell me, tell me. right and right. i have uh I, so i kind of had a, a and, and knowledge. Also, at one point, this is no joke. Uh, the first time I've told this story, I was um, in one of the offices in Pinewood Studios um, for a, a stunt thing or something, and I had to go to the bathroom so bad. And I like, go down this hall and turn down this hall there. And I'm walking down this hall, you guys, and all of a sudden I realized I'd been let into like a locked sanctuary where the the storyboards for the Russos were going down wow. both sides of this hallway. Uh, and yeah. I stopped and I looked around. And I saw everything. Wow. I saw like the vision for so much stuff. And I was of just what's like, what's going to happen in oh, the next, uh, next so oh, much stuff. Everything. So much stuff. Wow. And I was just like, there are fans that are going to be waiting for you outside. Yeah. Yeah. What do you know? Did you, you ask them any questions? Did you? I, 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 could, I'd act like I didn't know what you, I had said. Right. I mean, so I shouldn't even you. be telling the story right now, but right. I did. <laughs> then you get home. Been there. Right. Right. Now you're going to get a tweet. Tell us what you know. <laughs> it's funny, though, because you now. Because being a comic book fan and being in the MCU, not including Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp, because we won't put you on the spot there. Take those out of the equation. What's your favorite MCU film? Oh, Iron Man. Iron Man, the first. Yeah, one. the first Iron Man, and then um, it, it's it's. I love Winter Soldier. I really yeah. love what that uh, captured the tone in that to me. And then, so, God, this is really hard. So the the three way tie and the thing that is that's really special to me about the Marvel films, and each one is specific. And I love that they let each director and each group of artists that make the individual stories kind of bring their voices to them, yeah. while Kevin and the rest of the producers can still somehow find a way to fold all that into the bigger universe. When I first watched Guardians of the Galaxy, it was um, Paul Rudd, myself, and a couple of other actors maybe. We just started Ant-Man. We were, we were the night before principal photography started on yeah. Ant-Man. Marvel rented a small movie theater for us in Atlanta because Guardians hadn't come out publicly yet, but it was coming out like in a week or two. We sat in the th- this theater. We watched the movie. And 
There's something about the way the color, the tone, the characterization, um, and, you know, the stakes were so yeah. high while the wry humor that I always loved about the Marvel stories was still in there. To me, that fired on every cylinder about what I love about Marvel. And it's the one film that I've watched the most times since it came out is Guardians Part 1. Guardians Part 1. Yeah. Is it, um, and I, I'm going to sound like a kiss ass ahead. here, but... Ant Man is my favorite Marvel movie, which is great. Really and, which is, is funny really when you go is. back to our history on yes. our old show we used to do together because yeah. he and you know it's funny we were skeptical didn't know what it was going to be like because Marvel had to prove themselves with Guardians right because no one knew what the property was then they proved themselves and then some right and the same thing with Ant Man because the funny thing about that I visited the set for Ant Man the first one in Atlanta and Paul Rudd came walking out in the outfit yeah. and he and to this day you can just tell you probably will speak on this more than i can you can just tell that the dude embraces it mm -hmm. he loves playing ant-man he walked in because most actors won't won't do that come right. out in the full gear talk about the suit and and you, it made you feel like i want to see what this is but the real person that sold me on it wasn't kevin feige it wasn't it wasn't paul rudd it was it was peyton, peyton reed. reed all the way because of all the stuff that it went that went down Whew. with Edgar Wright and the way Whew. that he handled that, T tell me a little bit about that. Whew. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I want to hear about Whew. it. So I had like poured everything I had into making this indie film that year, and that movie was premiering at South by Southwest in like March of two thousand and uh, and 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 fourteen. My wife's about to have our first child, and I'm like, I've poured everything I've got in my heart, soul, time, and money into this indie. So it's like, we're like, oh man, I got, I don't know what I, what the next gig is. What's mm -hmm. happening? And I, and I'd been going through this audition process with Edgar for oh, Ant-Man, right. for the role of Kurt. And I went to do my test and I got it. And I ended up getting the the role and it was, while you know, Edgar was, like, was going to change my life. And while Edgar was still on, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he cast me. Um, at that point, there was a, more guys in the crew. Um, the gang was a was 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 larger number, so they started loot, loot dropping characters off, and I was reading in the press, so and so is now not in the film, so and so is not in the film, oh and I was God. like, God, right. I've got this new yeah. baby. I'm like, what am I doing for work? <laughs> and also, here was this chance to be a, my chance to be not only a part of the MCU, but my chance to be um, to take on a role that represented a side of my acting that I'd never gotten a chance to do before. Because you're familiar with the kind of work that I'd done up until that point. It was this is a character in a totally another sphere. Yeah. And so, um, oh man, it was the most stressful couple of months, right. and no one knew anything. And then my, Adam McKay was on for like and a Adam week, and Adam was right? writing for yeah. a week and to helping change the script and work on the script with Paul. And um, my manager called and said, "You're going to meet Peyton for a test." Um, and the stress level went back up because I thought I have testing again. Yeah. So I fly to Atlanta and I go and, and we're in this boardroom and Kevin and other executives are there and there's Paul, there's Evangeline, Michael Pena, yeah. me, uh, I think R Michael Douglas was there and they do this whole presentation and the ant helmet comes up and they show what it's gonna do and I'm sitting there being like, why are they <laughs> teasing right, this right. actor who's about, and then I finally meet Peyton and he's like, hey, I'm so happy you're here. He's like, I really wanted to make sure that we kept Kurt and that you got, and I was like, and, and I was like, what about my test? He's like, no, 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 you're here for like hair and makeup tests. Like, oh, you're wow. in you knew, the movie. You knew you had, oh, oh, that's man. the coolest thing. I was ever. like, wait, you mean I'm actually here to start shooting? You're He's in. like, yeah, you're, you're in. He's like, did no one tell you that? I was like, no, they told me I was coming down for a test. Oh, I thought no. I was testing again. The stress, yeah, but what, what a nice what a nice and, end to that stress. And, and what you said about Peyton is so true. His heart is all over these films, and he is he can out geek me any second. Like if I, he's the only person in that whole world, maybe besides Kevin, that I wouldn't want to play any game toe to toe with. Because yeah. I think, Ke like, I got, I try and get you know Peyton site or really specific gifts or like I did something, um, you know, through um, Loot Crate. I got him this really cool like Modoc ice cube maker and stuff. And he got, he thought that was awesome. But yeah. like he, he. Every moment, he, he's got such deep knowledge about what these characters are doing and what they're going through and why they need to get there. And um, and I, I just. I thank you for liking the movie so much. I mean, it's my. It, I I know because a ton of people will be like, I like this, I like this, I like this. And I just love the Ant Man thing because I'm kind of a mischievous dude. And if I was a character in the MCU, you would I'd definitely be, be in the Ant Man movies Ant -Man. for sure. Where does the <laughs> accent come from? Where is well, wait, originally in 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 my first auditions, uh, Kurt uh, actually spoke in Russian a little bit, okay. and uh, he was a Russian hacker um, who had met Luis in prison, and so. You know, I work on, I, I used a couple of friends who, one is from Russia and the other one is Serbian, but he could do Russian. <laughs> so we're working on the, di I worked on the dialect and I went into my first uh, audition at Seraphin Casting uh, in yeah. on Larchmont yeah. with a full accent. I had beard at the time and I was uh, shaggy and like uh, unbuttoned the 
po- polyester shirt like yeah. this and chains. You're my neighborhood. And, uh, <laughs> so we do the whole thing like that. Then I come back and I audition for Edgar like that. I'm hello, Mr. Wright. It's nice to meet you. And uh, I try because I, I was so, wa- so as an actor, it's dangerous to want something so bad. Right. But I really wanted this and I wanted them to. You know, I'm not like a known actor. I'm not like somebody you'd be like, oh, I I just wanted to be like some guy that they thought really was a Russian. I tried yeah. to look different. So when it came time for that test, I was telling you guys about it, come for that that test and, and Pena was cast. Paul Rudd obviously was cast. Edgar's there. We're at Disney. They've got all these actors in like a green room and you take turns going in and improvising scenes with Paul and Michael and other actors and seeing how chemistry T.I. Yeah, wasn't on yet? He wasn't on okay. yet. He didn't actually join until the last second. Um, I don't know what the okay. story was there, but he, um, so uh, I, I was in this, this, doing all the improv like this and not many lines for it's okay. And like we're having coffee donuts in the green room. And <laughs> Paul Rudd, who's from the same town in Kansas City that I'm from. Oh, wow. Cool. Worked at the same mall when he was in high school that I worked at when I was in high school called the Oak Park Mall on 95th and Quivira Road. I... He comes over. He's such a nice guy. I mean, he is the Paul. Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd. Yeah. That's all there is to it. And he, he's all excited. He comes over. He's like, hey, man, that was really funny in there. And to have Paul Rudd tell you, like, yeah. that was funny in there, you're... <laughs> right. Then he goes, like, when, how long have you been, like, when did you get here? Or, like, where are you, you know, tell me. And I was like, well, I was for... Um, assistant manager at uh, Long John Silver at Oak Park Mall. And uh, <laughs> he was like, what? I was like, dude, I'm, I'm from Overland Park. I've worked <laughs> at Oak Park Mall. And it was an awesome bonding yeah, moment yeah. that That's we had. Really cool. It's really, yeah, I do want to jump back to the Edgar Wright thing for a second to where, have you, because he was the one who cast you, right? Yes, he did. He, he, he cast me and, and I, was, I was on a show in Vancouver waiting for my wife to have the baby in LA. It was so stressful and I got the message that he was like, You're, I want you in the film. Right. Have yeah. you kept up a relationship with Edgar? We stayed in touch, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was at first, obviously, uh, devastated. Right. You know, I mean, a huge, huge fan of his. So this chance to work with him and having gone through that process with him, you bond with somebody because the audition and then the testing process and the whole like, yeah. you know, the situation. So we were messaging one another. When everything went down, he kind of stepped back right. for a bit. And I did send a couple of, you know, messages just being like, man, this is horrible. I'm right. really sorry, yada, yada. And then time went by and we um, we have a lot of mutual friends. And so, uh, yeah, we've run into each other since then. In fact, I just uh, messaged him the other day. And obviously, he's done some amazing stuff since. Baby and uh, yeah, he's, baby I can't driver. wait to see yeah. what he's doing next. Yep. I think he's uh, one of the best voices that's, that's out there in cinema. So um, I, I hope someday, somehow, that like I will get to work well, with him. It seems like a theme here. It seems like you're a guy that makes you, you make a lot of relationships. And that's really what this business is. Obviously, the talent is, is a big part of it. But it's, like you, you, it's the relationships. It's being able to, especially in the world that you're in. I mean, look at the stuff that you've done with Gotham and Dark Knight, the MCU. You're a fan of it. So you can, you can talk about it. I'm sure the research goes into it. You know it. You're able to just kind of port, you can see it in every one of your performances. Well, that thanks, you do man. Too. That's true. And, and, and again, like I could tell when I see you at these premieres, you're not just there as like a guy that was invited. You're a fan. I love it. I yeah, love it. My wife so cool. and I are like, it's the weirdest thing. The Marvels, the whole overarching universe is we're like, you are like family now, yeah. you know? And like, I have real actual, like in Hollywood, everyone's got friends. It's like, yeah, I'm friends with, them. but I have a, like some of my real true friends are a part of this universe as well. Mm-hmm. And so it's re- like Karen Gillan is a dear friend of mine and we make independent film together and, you know, James Gunn and Sean Gunn and my, I mean, all these um, incredible artists who I've known over the years. Judy Greer, who's in Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp, I've known her since we were theater yeah. people in Chicago And she together. crushes it in Halloween, yeah. by the way, we saw it last Dude, night. Dude, yeah. I am dying to see yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah. I'm um, a horror. <laughs> what, are your thoughts, what are your thoughts on the potential uh, James Gunn directing uh, Suicide Squad? Here's what I'd like to say about sure. that. Okay. Um, really, guys? Uh, okay. He's one of my close friends, okay. obviously. And so I'm, but I'm never going to stand up here and be like, if you named any movie, like, oh, yeah, he'd be amazing for that. He'd be amazing for that. There's no one in this galaxy or universe better suited to tell this story, I believe, than James Gunn. Suicide I Spiders. really, yeah. truly believe that. I believe he is a master of taking characters iconic characters fantastical characters mytho- modern mythological characters and the ones especially who are checkered who are broken who come from a past that you know is, is dark yeah. you know characters that aren't just supermans of the world okay right. and and finding depth in them and finding complexity in them and then 
and then bringing an audience behind following and caring about their journey, which is what has to happen with Suicide Squad. I don't care if they're the bad guys. I don't care if they're the ones that we're supposed to be rooting against. In this particular narrative, we have to get on board with them and really care about what it is that they're doing. And the bond between them, even if it's completely effed up and twisted and dark and whatever, I just, there's nobody better suited than to tell the story. So awesome. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, look, Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's how we, my wife just watched it. On, I can't, I, was, where, I don't know where the hell I was. I got back and I said, what did you think? She loved it. She loved it. She's like, uh, one and two, the chemistry with you guys, the, 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 the crew of Michael Pena and everything too. Have you guys become pretty close friends? You can tell. It's, it's really great. It's it really great, worked. man. And, 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 and like you couldn't find three or four more different dudes in the world. Like, so it's like, we'll be sitting in this smelly old van. You've got yeah. Paul Rudd, Michael Pena, T.I., and Dave Desmondin. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, and it's this soup that just works. And uh, and that's, you know, Peyton's awesome. He's always side coaching. But uh, I love playing with those guys. And um, and I love this movie so much because uh, all the stuff I've been up uh, in, in up until this point in my career is, you know, you went from Prisoners to, to Blade Runner, Dark Knight, yep. whatever. It's dark. It's it's stuff I'm so proud of and I love and I hope someday that they'll enjoy watching it and think it's cool that dad was a part of it. But there's been nothing until this point that I could sit with my kids and be like, dude, like we can watch right. this together. Yeah. And going back to the way that these movies change comic books and even comic shops, I'm in more shops because uh, now I get to travel so much for work all over the world where you see so many more young kids than I ever used to see in shops. And I right. love that. And I love that my kid could watch Ant-Man and the Wasp because Ant-Man and the Wasp is awesome and hilarious and badass as it is. There's no F-bombs. There's no bloody violence. There's none of the darkness that we all love and want to yeah. see in some of our movies. This is one where you could take the kids and it's about family. We're in a time in our history and in our culture where keeping families together and the importance of family and fighting for what is important, it really matters. Mm-hmm. And I think that this film nails that he does and and do you uh do you have any because being on that set by the way in 2014 I believe it yeah. was, when michael douglas walks into that room i mean the place just like just as the reporters that were there were just like i mean it's <laughs> what, yeah what happens when, when michael douglas walks the first into that room, time yeah well, you gotta be losing your mind the, especially yeah the first time you're like that yeah it's like oh, right right it's like Whoosh. And he like he's so it was a real stately. fatal attraction. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Bah, bah. Yeah. <laughs> I crossed my legs. Um, <laughs> he he comes in, you know. He's 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 Michael Douglas. The same exact thing happened when I was on set the first time that I saw Michelle Pfeiffer come yeah, walking down, yeah. and mm-hmm. she was in her you know Janet costume, having come from the quantum. And Douglas realm. is old news at this point. Yeah, but yeah. No, but it was so <laughs> rad seeing him in the yeah. suit. Are you kidding me, right, dude? Like, we were sitting yeah. on the pier in San Francisco at Fisherman's Wharf, like actually shooting this scene in exterior, and there's Michael Douglas in the suit and and Michelle Pfeiffer in her suit, but. With both of them, the funny thing is the a few moments after all that like insane tension like breathes out of the room and everybody's like, okay, yeah, we're about to shoot a scene with cinematic legends. They're both cool as crap. They're both awesome. They're both so funny. And like he is, um, he and I both love theater and he's got this incredible history and he worked with some incredible legends, obviously, in his career. He's got, so we just, he just tells great stories yeah. and you just get to talk to the guy and he's cool as it. As it can be. Well, you told some, chats. yeah, you told some great stories here today, thank Dave you. Smallson. Thank you so much for coming in, by the way. And Ant Man and the Wasp, guys, check it out. It's coming out on Blu-ray, and it is worth the watch once again. The MCU will see you. And what's uh, what's coming up next? What you, wh- so I just finished this uh, this film with Karen Gillan. It's called yes. All Creatures Here Below. It's an indie drama, and um, my God, you guys, she like blows the doors off this thing. It's it's a side of her performance and her acting that I've, I I knew she could do, but like. Yeah. Right. It's insane. And then um, I'm shooting some secret. You know, it's always like a secret. I was just about to say stuff, but it's like the secret Can't stuff. That, can, I, can I come back? Because I love you guys. <laughs> sure. and, yes. And we'll talk more about it. Yes, on that. And also, um, when we go off air here, so you said something to me. He mentioned some stuff about being a, your trivia guy, aren't you? I do like trivia, yeah. Uh, uh, Inner geekdom. Yeah, yeah, no, geek, Inner yeah. geekdom. And I'll talk to you about exactly yeah. what that is after. But what about Twitter? Are you on the Twits? Yep, yep. Where can I find you? Just at your name? My last name, Des Malchin. Yeah.